Hi, this is Edward Troxel. In this tutorial, we're going to start a new series that are based off of this post that was found on the forums. It says, can you advise an AI script which will delete fragments in a video which are viewed as stationary, non-moving frames? In this case, he wants frames that don't change to be removed from the timeline. And so the first thing it has to do is be able to see the actual frames. From a script, you can't directly see what is in a frame. And so you have to find a way to be able to see the information. And uh, with a script, I really don't want to have to worry about opening the video files myself to learn how to do all that. And so I decided in this case, it might be better just to save an image and then we can easily look at an image through .NET and compare two images together. So that is what I decided to do. Now, is this the most efficient way? No. Is it the fastest way? Absolutely not. Is it the way I would do it if I was trying to write a script for release to the public for sale? Absolutely not. This is just kind of a chasing a rabbit down a hole to see exactly what can we do directly in the Vegas scripting API and see what can be done. So you can use this if you want, but it's definitely not the fastest way. I would look at other options that are available out there, but it was a fun exercise to kind of chase this rabbit. So let's get started on this and see how it goes. When we come back up here, we're going to look at our main script. And one of the new things that I've added here at the top is a date time because I'm actually going to write a little log file. I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard so we can paste it after it's done. But right now, I'm getting the date time and at the very beginning, I set it to now. Then, in here, I am going through my Vegas, my Vegas for each track in my tracks. If it's a video track for each event in that video track, if the event is selected. Now you notice I have three lines here, but two of them are marked out. That's because they have kind of been progressing along the way as I've been developing this. And so the first thing I had to do was figure out how to get the images. So I'm going to pass the selected event to the check images, get images uh, routine. And so let's take a look at that. So here's the function I created for this. And I'm passing it the event, which is the track event. And then we want to get every frame in that event. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the start frame, which is a time code of the start of that event. Then I'm going to have me a left file and a right file because I have to compare two files. So this will be my left file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go save it in the temporary files path that you've specified in Vegas. Uh, add the slash and then I'm going to call this one 0.png since it's the first one. And then uh, right now I'm setting a file write variable. I don't know what it's going to be yet, so I just set it to nothing. Now I am saving a snapshot of the left file in ping format. And I'm saving the start frame e position. I've created me a bitmap of image one. And it's a new bitmap with the file left file name, the image that I just saved in this snapshot. I'm going ahead and creating my second image bitmap variable and just setting it to null because we will be assigning it down below. Then to see how long this takes, I'm going to create me a string called result, which I am putting the current time into. Now I need to go through every frame of this event. So I'm going for an integer called curve frame, starting with frame number one. Since we use frame number zero up here, we need to go to frame number one here. As long as the current frame is less than the event dot length dot frame count, and then we're going to increase it each time as we go through the loop. So now I'm going to set my file right file name to, to 
the temporary files path plus the directory separator character plus the current frame which is one the first time and adding dot ping to it so it will save me a zero dot ping and a one dot ping then I'm going to get the time code which I'm calling the current position which is the start frame plus time code dot from frames and it'll be the current frame which the first time will be one so notice up here we got the start frame here we're getting the start frame plus one and then I'm going to save this snapshot as file right then I create me an image from this new file that we just saved now this is going to come down the road I just threw that in there so that we could check it at some point but right now I'm just going to add to my log that the current frame dot to string so this will show what frame I'm on in the log now I need to get rid of image number one because I'm done with it I am using the dispose command to make sure that it has been released from memory then I am deleting that file and then I am setting file left equal to file right and image one equal to image two so now when I go back through this loop my file right will become number two and my file left will be number one and so we go through this again until we go through all of the images finally when we're done we've disposed of image one up here when we're totally finished we have to dispose of image two then we'll delete file right then I'm getting the current time again adding that to the log and copying the results to the clipboard so let's see how this works and we can actually follow along and see what it's doing so I'm going to select a short little clip here and let's run the script on that script so right now it is generating snapshots and you can see the preview is changing if we come in here we can see here 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and we can see the numbers are being generated there now it is finished and if we open notepad and paste we can see that at 10:43 at 10 a.m. it started it went through 16 frames and then it stopped at 10:43:25 so it took 15 seconds to process 16 frames so that's the end of this first tutorial we will expand on it in the next one but in this one we've actually learned quite a bit we've learned how to save each frame to an individual file we've got two frames open at any one given time and we are able to delete those frames so we don't have a clutter of files left on the hard drive when we're done so as each frame is being processed it's then deleted when we add the next frame so I hope you find this tutorial interesting uh, subscribe and we'll let you know when the next tutorial is ready please sign up at www.jettv.com and subscribe on YouTube to get further notifications on when new videos are presented.